The Rising of the Promised Neverland- I mean, Shield Hero. The Rising of the Shield Hero gets a ranking of... What's up, weebs? My cheeks have been absolutely clapped by this amazing spring anime season, and there's only like two bad anime airing right now, so I've got so many S-tiers to hand out, I don't even know where to begin. Oh god. My first impression of Shield Hero Season 2 was that all the good parts from the light novel got isekai'd into a different anime. Remember that meme, something is rising, but it's not the Shield Hero? Yeah, that's more relevant than ever because if Season 1 was the rising of the Shield Hero, then Season 2 has been the dropping of the Shield Hero. D tier is what I would have given it if the entire season was as bad as the CGI turtle arc, but the later episodes have actually been surprisingly good. If you're a fan of the series who dropped it recently, go ahead and undrop it, because Shield Hero has risen out of D tier. It's definitely not as bad as people say it is, but I am leaving it in C tier because every episode in the first half of the season felt like I was watching a 30 minute loading screen. Summertime Render is S tier. I'd call it a suspense thriller, but it's primarily a mystery anime, although the true mystery is figuring out where to watch it. Without spoiling the plot for you, this creepy island appears to have some type of curse where people keep dying and disappearing. So now now it's all up to Natsuki Subaru to stop the Hinamizawa syndrome once and for all. Yeah, it's basically Higarashi mixed with ReZero, Among Us, Diablo 4, and Despicable Me 2. You might have to change your pants after each episode because it actually gets kinda scary, but the art is beautiful. And by the art, I mean this character named Mio. She's beautiful, and she's also kind of tan, so get ready for some more controversy on Twitter whenever the dub comes out. I'm Quitting Heroing is an anime that sounds a lot different if you remove the G at the end. It's about a hero who decides to join the Demon Lord's army and become a villain. Except he never actually does anything evil because then the audience wouldn't like him. Most of the season is like watching a really dedicated employee carrying the entire company on his back, but then there's an amazing plot twist in episode 9. Overall, it's a decent B-tier anime that happens to have one completely unexpected masterpiece episode that even made a ReZero reference by skipping the opening. Which reminds me, I almost forgot the highlight of this entire anime is obviously this character's name. A couple of Cuckoos. Feels like you put Nisa Koi and Domestic Girlfriend into a blender, drank it, and then shit yourself uncontrollably. The story consists entirely of wild coincidences, and the plot has more twists in it than the physical structure of DNA. Basically, the protagonist walks outside, grabs a fistful of milk, and then gets engaged. Also, his little sister wants to fuck him. Apparently, when he was born, they accidentally gave him to a different family by swapping him with the girl he's currently supposed to marry. I don't know how a hospital mixes up a boy and a girl, unless the boy just has a really tiny penis, but as long as you suspend your disbelief and try to have fun with it, a couple of cucks can be an amazing experience. The real cucks are the people not watching this anime. A tier. Spy Multiplied by Family recently became one of my favorite series ever. I've heard a lot of people saying this anime is overhyped, but- Objection hearsay. Anya, the telepathic daughter, is wholesome and adorable. Yor, the assassin milf, is dangerously hot, and Twilight, the secret agent husband, is cooler than the other side of the pillow. I don't know how anyone could ever dislike this anime because everything is pretty much perfect. S tier is obviously where Spy Fam belongs, but I think it's worthy of its own tier above the S tier. However, I don't think it's the best anime from this season. Summertime Render and a few others might at least give Spy Fam some competition. But the next anime I'm about to talk about is literally in my personal top 5, maybe even top 3 favorite anime ever. So without further ado, femboys and gentlemen, clap your cheeks together for Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 3. Every week, I feel an odd sense of happiness and comfort whenever a new Love is War episode comes out. The pacing is perfect and every episode is full of subtle references and amazing humor that actually makes you audibly laugh. The characters are so lovable, I made another tier list just to show how much I love them. Kaguya-sama Love is War is physical proof that we're currently living in the peak era of anime. Whether you're a chad, a virgin, a furry, or a lolicon, everyone should be watching this anime. Checkmate atheists, Kaguya-sama is god tier. Tomodachi Game is basically Squid Game, except without all the shit 
that made Squid Game popular. The shock value and spontaneous murder has all been replaced with numbers and dialogue, and the only real shock value in this anime is the fact that it's actually pretty good. If you can look past the bad art and mediocre plot, it's a dramatic strategy game with a lot of plot twists and a villain that reminds me of Shakespeare's Iago. Squid Game wasn't the best comparison because surprisingly, Tomodachi Game feels exactly like Yu-Gi-Oh without cards. I would have given it a B tier ranking if the art wasn't absolute cheeks. The writing isn't bad, but sadly the dialogue sounds like it's being delivered by Mark Zuckerberg and the art and animation would probably look a lot better if I took my contacts out. C tier. Aharansan is an episodic high school comedy slice of life, but I think there should be a new tag invented called amusing because that's the best way to describe it. Basically, Aharan talks very quietly and has a bunch of other issues that force her to depend on her classmate Raido. Their relationship will become very cute, wholesome, and sweet. As long as you can get over the fact that Aharan looks like an infant child. This anime is almost too relaxing, it alleviates stress, and it's just overall good vibes. Watch this on your second monitor while you're playing League and you won't even get the urge to be toxic. A tier. Shikamori's Not Just a Cutie is a unique rom-com where the couple's already dating in episode 1, and I guess the gender roles are supposed to be reversed because Shikamori is very badass and masculine, while Izumi is just completely and utterly useless. Yeah, instead of making him feminine, they just made him unable to function at a basic human level. He's literally the ultimate unlucky student, and I can't even fathom how he's still alive. If Shikamori didn't remind him to breathe, Izumi would have suffocated to death in the first episode, which would have been a massive improvement. I bet you when he's done taking a shit, he yells out, Shikamori! And then she walks into the bathroom with a handful of wipes, probably wearing rubber gloves too, because she knows Izumi can be a messy boy. Maybe I'm just too much of a Chad to relate to such a virgin protagonist, but then again, Izumi does have more girlfriends than I do. Regardless, right now, I feel like I'm only enjoying half of the anime. Shikamori herself is always a spectacle, but Izumi is just so incredibly painful to watch. This anime isn't bad, but it's not as good as your friend said it was. C tier. Konohila Mendokusai reminds me of my videos because it's literally a shitpost. It's a garbage anime about a garbage healer named Carla. Carla happens to be a dark elf, which explains why she acts like an NPC from Morrowind. She's irritating, narcissistic, adorable, and her funny dialogue is the only redeemable quality in the entire anime. I kinda wish Carla was a character in this other healer anime I watched about a year ago because this one is D tier, but the hentai is probably fire. Date Alive Season 4 is the continuation of one of my favorite harems, and my only complaint is that it doesn't have enough kurumi. To summarize the plot of every Date Alive episode in one sentence, the planet is suddenly threatened by a dangerous waifu. In the only way to seal her powers is if the main character sticks his tongue in her mouth. I know that might sound like a joke, but it's unironically well written. Trust me, Data Live is actually a high quality anime, and I'll try not to be biased here because unfortunately not everyone can be as cultured as I am. It's difficult to recommend this type of anime to a broad audience, so I attempted giving Data Live a diplomatic B tier but some type of magnetic force pulled my cursor back up to A tier, so I'm sorry guys, but this is out of my hands now. Trapped in a Dating Sim is about a guy who gets reincarnated as a side character in a reverse harem dating sim where men are considered inferior to women. It's a matriarchal society where women can basically just get away with a lot more than men can. Kinda like Twitch, but because our protagonist is supposed to be a side character, his actions could potentially interfere with the storyline of the game and destabilize the entire world. Thus, he is extremely cautious, and he always tries to avoid pummeling all the main characters with a shovel in front of a massive audience. Yeah, this anime is kinda stupid, but the story is extremely addicting, and I'm giving it A tier for being the funniest isekai of the season. Unless you consider ya boy Kongming an isekai. This anime is far too good to be labeled an isekai, but it's about a historical Chinese military strategist who gets transported to the future. He quickly adapts to the modern era after meeting a cute singer in a nightclub, and then there's like 87 rap battles per episode. <laughs> Kongming has one of the most unskippable openings I've ever seen, and if I told you I haven't been listening to it on loop for the past several weeks, that would be, uh, what do they call it? Cap. Yeah, yeah, Cap. The incredible music, amazing characters, and the hilarious, wholesome story make it irrefutably one of the best anime of the season. 
S tier. Heroines Run the Show is an anime about idols and working and nothing. There's just nothing. It's boring, bland, and it sucks. I know I might be pissing off an entire fan base right now, but if the spring anime season was a slice of watermelon, this anime would be the green part that doesn't need to exist. I'd honestly rather listen to Johnny Depp testify in 0.5 speed. Um. Yes. D tier. The Executioner and Her Way of Life has a really awesome twist. It's an isekai for almost an entire episode until the protagonist gets killed by an executioner who replaces him as the new protagonist. Her next assignment is to kill this other girl with giant boobs, but it's difficult because they start forming a friendship and I can even smell a hint of Yuri in the distance. Despite being a ruthless murderer, I still find the main character very likable, and the world and story are decent as well. Contrary to its misleading mal rating, I'm giving this B tier. Birdie Wing Golf Girls is an anime about girls. And that's about it. Sure, one could argue that there's also a subplot about golf, but you and I both want to touch everything in this anime except for the grass. Let's not kid ourselves. Nobody would be watching this if the characters looked like actual golfers. Also, the protagonist isn't even good at golf, she's just lucky. Blasting the ball through a tree branch or in between trains has nothing to do with golf. At that point, you're just gambling with a potential felony. I like the waifus, but sports anime are for people who go outside. D tier. Skeleton Knight in Another World is about... You know what? Take a wild guess. Yep, the title is pretty self-explanatory, but if I chose it, I might have gone with something like boneless reincarnation, but that wouldn't really make sense. Anyway, the first episode immediately opens with 19 different camera angles of a rape scene. A wild boner appears, and then he chops everyone to pieces. I'm not gonna lie, they lost me in the first half, but it got kinda badass after Ainz appeared. Overall, it's another generic average anime though. Take any isekai you've seen before, but replace the main character with a spooky skeleton, and that's basically what this anime is. Nothing special, C tier. Science fell in love, so I tried to prove it season 2 is a romance about two nerds who try to use math and science to prove that they're in love with each other. Every chapter has a funny experiment followed by a wholesome conclusion that produces dopamine and serotonin for the viewer, and you might even release a bit of nitric oxide if you get really into it. I would have given the first season an A tier, but that's only because it didn't air at the same time as Kaguya-sama. It's a bit unfair, but Kaguya really puts all these other rom-coms into perspective Perspective, so I'm giving this B tier. I would highly recommend watching this after you finish watching Kaguya. The Greatest Demon Lord is Reborn as a Typical Nobody is a new anime about, yup, the greatest demon lord who gets reborn as a typical nobody with the powers of the greatest demon lord. He's basically still the greatest demon lord. The only major difference is the hair color of the girls in his harem. This is our new standard issued power fantasy where Anno's Foldy Gold adds a new waifu to his harem every episode and one shots all the random bad guys who start a fight with him for no reason. I'm not ashamed to admit that this type of anime is a sort of guilty pleasure for me, so although I've been enjoying this at a B tier level, it's certainly doesn't belong there. I will admit that the music is absolute fire, but sadly it's not enough to keep this out of D tier. Love After World Domination is a funny romance between an evil bitch and a power ranger, except they're not allowed to be in love so they have to pretend that they're enemies. It's like if Harry Potter and Voldemort were secretly fucking each other the entire time. This is one of the most underrated anime of the season in my opinion, and it's definitely worth a watch if you're a fan of romance. A tier. And behold, now you know what good taste looks like. That's the tier list, and I'd like to insincerely apologize to all the angry Shikamori stands. But overall guys, I think this is one of the best anime seasons we've had in a while. I still read every single comment, so if you disagree with any of my rankings, please let me know what tier you would have given instead. If you made it to the end of the video, please pick up a shovel and pummel the fuck out of that stupid like button. Thanks everyone for watching, I gotta go take a shit. But keep talking about anime, I'll see you guys in the comment section. Peace out.